How's it going, folks? And welcome back to Atalanta. Today, we have the first transfer special since we moved to Italy. Today, we have, well, hopefully some transfer business to commence. It is the start of the summer, the 20th of June. The season has ticked over, or rather, is about to tick over. And of course, having secured fourth place in the league, we're looking to make some progress that's hopefully going to see us climb up the league and also help us compete in the Champions League for the coming season. And well, let me tell you now, transfer business is kind of commencing early because if we just look at the transfers on the outs and scroll down quite a long way, down at the bottom here, the first departure of the summer, Ruslan Malinovsky has left the club. He has gone to Aston Villa for £16.5 million. We did, of course, have a few bids slightly higher than that just in the winter. However, he didn't accept any of the contracts that came his way. And with one year left on his deal, we did decide to cash in on him. And well, with that money, we're already looking to reinvest in the centre mid position. Renato Sanchez, transfer listed by Lil. He has already accepted a contract offer from us. £65,000 a week. We are paying £2.3 up front. A further £10 million, I think, or so over the next three seasons. So an elongated deal, but hopefully a deal that with us well, theoretically, consistently competing in the Champions League is going to be affordable. And well, the other player that we've signed here, one who I know people are going to be excited about, Lorenzo Luca is joining the club. 21 years old, a player who, of course, if you've been watching the network game over on Twitch, you'll know I've been using this man. I've been having so much fun with him. And at 21 years old, he is an absolutely phenomenal player this year at Football Manager. We have snapped him up for £12.5 million. With that in mind, we have now got an abundance of strikers, so potentially going to be looking to move some of them on. Just looking at the first team, plenty of players of interest in them, and, uh, well, plenty of room to hopefully manoeuvre in the market. There's interest in our players. There's a few players who I've earmarked and set asking prices for who perhaps I'd be willing to let go. There's others that feel a tad untouchable, but all in all... I'm rather excited for the next few weeks ahead. So just looking at our team and how things are shaping up at the moment, at least, this is my vision for the team going into next season. This is kind of how I see the pieces falling. In terms of the starting 11, I'm thinking we go with something like this. Now, DeMarco had an amazing year last year at wide centre-back on the left-hand side, but I do wonder if his talents would be better used as a left winger for us. And, and Well, I say winger, you know what I mean, a left-sided midfielder for us, someone who really gets up and down the pitch. And then we move Mela out onto the right-hand side. I am conscious of the fact that for the Den Denmark national team, he does play out on the left, cutting in on his right. I do feel like for us, and well indeed in Football Manager, playing as a wide midfielder on support out on the right-hand side could be a really, really good use of his talents. He's shown he can do it out on the left. I just feel like with DeMarco on the right, uh, on the left, Mailer makes sense to move over to the right-hand side. In terms of the midfield, right now, I'm thinking we will go with Sandri and Coop Miners to be our kind of midfield duo. And while there's an obvious gap in the team here, that gap, I'm thinking, is going to be fulfilled by Renato Sanchez, who, if we just look at as a centre mid on attack, you can see here he is lacking the teamwork, perhaps, for the role. And maybe the w kind of vision and work rate could be, uh, I was going to say work rate, w the vision and off the ball could be a little bit better. But you look at his work rate, you look at his technique, you look at the stamina, you look at his mentals and his physicals. He's kind of ready made for this role. And I think for £2 million, he really would add something there. If we just compare him to Coop Miners, not a dissimilar player really, but slightly more offensive orientated. I do wonder if these two as a midfield duo for us really could perhaps provide the spice that, well, to be honest, we just didn't have in the centre of the midfield this year. Now, of course, with Luca potentially coming into the team, we already have an abundance of attackers. Coita, Guiri, Salcedo, Raspadori, Xerxi. There is interest in the likes of Raspadori and Guiri. Really, I don't want to sell either of these two players. Whilst their values are relatively high, I view them as, well, close to untouchable. Perhaps more so Raspadori than Guiri. If the right offer came in for Guiri, Maybe I could be swayed. But when I look at Raspadori, he is just such a great player going forward. Either footed, professional personality, loads of room to grow. And I do feel like long term, he and Luca alongside each other could be such a fun attacking Italian duo that I kind of just want to make it work. Now, for this year, I'd kind of be happy going into the new season for Luca to be the backup striker. But yeah, if Guiri got some interest in him and got an offer, let's say in the region of 30 million, 
maybe I would find it kind of hard to turn down. So with Malinowski leaving the club for around, what was it, £17 million? Pounds. You can see right now the transfer budget is just shy of £25 million. Plenty of money in the wage budget, although some of that already committed with the Renato Sanchez and Luca deals. If both of those transfers go through, we will still have just under um, £10 million pounds to spend. So plenty of money still to be made. But realistically, if we want to make some further moves, it probably is going to involve moving players on. We're a club that don't have just infinite amounts of money. We don't have a crazy Premier League TV deal. We've got to do some wheeling and dealing. And well, I feel like I've talked a lot about what's going on right now. Maybe I should start mashing that continue button and getting some wheeling and dealing done. Now, Renato Sanchez is set to sign for us. I am going to confirm this deal. Um, I will kind of half-heartedly apologise for the fact that both the Luca and Renato Sanchez deal are done as you arrive. They have already been negotiated and kind of dealt with for all intents and purposes, but they were two players that I didn't want to let anyone else come in for. And I felt like by coming in at the 20th of June, closer to the transfer window opening, hopefully we'd get a few more of the players that I want to get sold, sold sooner in this episode so we can spend money sooner and theoretically maybe avoid two episodes on transfers. As much as everyone loves transfers, I would like to keep all the action to one video ideally. And just like Renato Sanchez, a day later, Luca set to sign for us 12.75 million. I feel like this is a man who's mega, mega popular in Football Manager. I did um and are about kind of signing him as a somewhat predictable player, someone who I feel like a lot of people are familiar with this year in Football Manager. But I feel like thematically, we're managing in Italy. None of the big dogs have snapped him up after his season in Serie B. And uh, he's not the ready-made article just yet. We are going to have to work, I think, a little bit with him and uh, really develop him a bit like we have done Guerri and Raspadori this season. One interesting thing to note is the fact that right now we have four players who I've got in the senior team who are currently out on loan. The first is Salvatore Esposito. We signed him this most recent year. He's been on loan at Benevento. He's had a really, really good loan spell. I think I'm going to propose a loan extension with him and see if they... Show interest. They haven't shown interest. That's a shame. I think Esposito needs to be getting regular first team football. So we will probably loan him out again. However, the other two players in our senior team or three players in the senior team, players who, if they don't have options in their loan deals to sign permanently activated, I probably will make part of our first team this year. The first is Matteo Pessina. He's been on loan at Monza for the last year. He is an absolutely insane centre mid. I'm not sure on the ins and outs of this. I know in Italy there's weird deals that go on with players being loaned out, signing a few years later. In Pessina's case, he's been on loan at Monza, which is actually where he started his career way back when. There's an option in his contract for him to be signed for £13 million. I don't think Monza are going to be able to afford that, even though they've stayed up this year. So if he doesn't get bought by them, he will probably be another really useful addition in the centre of the midfield. Debatably better than a lot of the midfielders already at the club. Elsewhere, we've got Galini here, who I would not reject as a backup goalkeeper. Um, he has an optional future fee of £7 million with um, Fiorentina. If that is activated... It's £7 million for a backup goalkeeper. I'd probably take that anyway. The other player that we're going to keep an eye on is Christian Romero. We talked about this a few episodes ago. He has an optional future fee. The way that the summer transfer database kind of handles it is a little bit weird because in real life, it's a very unique situation. There is a chance that Tottenham will sign him for £43 million. If they don't, there might be a temptation to keep him around. There might be a temptation just to kind of offer him around and see if anyone bids on him. Um, yeah, again, his contract's up at a in a week at Spurs. So I think the situation there will become a little bit more clearer in, uh, well, a few weeks. So just looking ahead, a week until the transfer window opens, I'm hoping we're going to get a bit more interest in our players then. And uh, well, until we have some transfer bids or stuff, it's time to spam the space bar a little bit, I think. Now, one player in our academy who I want to bring your attention to because he's done really well this year is Shaka Omar. Now, unfortunately, his goals for Palermo in Serie B didn't keep them up. They did go down. But this man, second half of the season, scored eight goals and 18 in Serie B as a player who was 17 when he went out on loan initially. He is a Swedish under-21 international. And when you look at him, he could be a really, really bright player for the future. Definitely someone I want to keep my eye on. Would like to loan him out again with Palermo being relegated, maybe looking for a team slightly higher up. Um, ideally, another team in Serie B, I think. Um, but yeah, one of those players who I think if we can get a good loan deal for could be a really good player down the line. And one more player in a similar vein is this guy, Matteo Ruggeri. Again, he's a product of our academy, good little player, some room to grow, and 19 years old, I think he's a little bit away from the level required for the first team, 
but he had a pretty good loan spell in Split Serie B. Might look for another low move for him as well uh, going into the new season. Syria signing of the season, Federico De Marco. Never doubted myself. Never questioned. Pat on the back. Pat on the, never, never was in doubt. Elsewhere, just a thing of worthing of note, I suppose. Badia Chile and Soleil also appearing in the top five. Um, yeah, I think it's safe to say that the additions we made to the defence were rather good this year. Now I'm not one to complain. Too much. Okay, I can complain a little bit, but not too much. First two games of the season, Milan away, Juve at home. I don't know if it's a human who does the fixtures. I don't know if it's a computer that does it. Whoever it is, I think they hate me. That is an awful start to the season. Verona and Fiorentina, not very simple either. I'm not thrilled. We're getting towards that business point where transfers are happening. Zappa Costa has now officially left us permanently, going to Wolves for £9 million. And well, it's the start of the month. And you know what that means? It means that we can sign some players. Where are our new signings? Where are our new additions? I'll tell you where they are. Here they are. Renato Sanchez and Lorenzo Luca joining us. Two massive additions to the team. I think in Renato Sanchez's case, he's going to provide a little bit of energy, a little bit of exuberance, love his mentals and just the high work rate and stamina. I think are going to be very useful in our midfield. It's something that we missed last year. And uh, worth noting that on the outs, Gosens has officially left the club. Didn't have a say in this. He was out on loan at Inter last year. He was going to join them permanently. He's now left for £21 million. Unfortunately for us, uh, none of that money appears in the bank balance right now. Or does it? Does it appear in the bank balance now? That can't. I mean, it's not £21 million. I don't know where that money's gone, but I'm going to ask the owners if I can have it because it, it would be kind of useful to have that money. Um, elsewhere, a load of our kind of youngsters, just players who I wasn't extending the contracts of, have now kind of all left the team and moved on. Pessina hasn't been signed by Monza. He's now returned to the club. If we just compare him uh, with Coop Miners, I want to give you an idea of kind of how big of an upgrade Pessina is. Now, he's not quite as good defensively, but he's quicker. He's got better vision, slightly more technical. He's going to be a very useful player for us. I mean, he's playing regularly for the Italian national team. Um, he's not dissimilar, actually, when you look at it, to Renato Sanchez. I almost wonder if these two as a duo are kind of going to be a game changer. I'm very, very excited to see what they can do. I think between them, their work rate, their stamina, they are going to be like little beavers in the midfield, building a dam in front of our defence. You can also see here, Romero hasn't been signed by Tottenham. Now, interesting scenario here. What do we do with him? He's got a quite a high value. I think that's because he's been playing in the Premier League. So because of that, his guide value is a little higher. I'm going to offer him out for an unspecified amount. He's kind of a player who I never really accounted for having at the club. I kind of expected Tottenham to sign him. Obviously, in real life, he's probably going to move to Tottenham and Atalanta are going to get a load of money. We've not had that money here. I've kind of planned for life without him. So if I could sell him for 40 million, that would kind of enable us to do us a whole lot of stuff. And with all the centre-backs I've signed, I don't see a way in which he fits in. I mean, I probably could make space for him, but I think with his high value, especially compared to a lot of the other players in our team, it's probably just exploring if anyone's interested in him. You can see here Demiral and Romero. Of course, Demiral with us last year. If we just compare the two of them, I mean, I'll let you be the judge of who is better. I don't think there's a world of difference, but I think if I was going to keep one of them, I probably would go with Demiral just to play at the centre of our defence. So I have been offering out some of the more fringe players on the team. I've offered out Demiral, I've offered out M Romero, Pasalic, I've just been floating the market with. I think with Pasina and Renato Sanchez coming in, we've kind of now got an abundance of centre midfielders. We've got some interest in a few of them, so I've been offering them out. There's been no deals for the players we want to see deals for, but... We have had some offers. You can see here Tottenham have made an offer for Demiral. Of course, they've just lost Romero, so I guess they're looking for a replacement for him. They've offered us 17.5 million um, and 6 million over 12 months. Now, with Demiral, whilst I'm asking for 40 million, his guide value is actually only 18 million to 20. This is, again, one of the reasons why I was thinking we might look to sell Romero, but obviously this bid somewhat eclipses that. I'm going to be a bit greedy here just because it's so early on in the transfer window. There's every chance that a team would come back in for um, Demiral um, if we perhaps price them out here. So I'm going to be cheeky. I'm going to ask for 35 million. They might take it. They might try and find a middle ground. I don't think I want to sell him for less than 30 million. So I feel like this is a good counter negotiation. They've come back with a not dissimilar amount, to be honest. I'm going to play hardball here. 32 and a half. They have offered 21 
with 7.5 in installments. I don't want to reject it. I kind of wish I could stall it a little bit. At the same time, Demorel is interested in talking to him. How much was Demorel signed for by Atalanta in real life recently? He was signed for... I d doesn't tell us in the game. I don't think it was that much money they signed him from Juve for. I think we'd probably be making a profit here. That said, I'm not going to let him go just yet. I'm hoping he's not going to kick up a fuss about that. I think the fact we've had a bid of that amount is promising in terms of there being interest. I'm going to slowly lower the asking price. As I said, we're early on in the summer. We don't need to worry about it. Elsewhere, we've had some interest in Badia Shile. Now, I feel like Badia Shile, his re re kind of value is really, really low considering how good he is. Realistically, if I was going to sell him, I feel like I'd want probably 25 million for him, which I just don't see Dortmund offering. I'm going to just float the idea of 25 million and see what they say. If they pull out and he starts kicking up a fuss, we'll deal with it, but he's got a long-term deal. We don't need to worry about it too much. And unsurprisingly, they, they've run away from negotiations. Not ideal. I need to raise some funds somehow, but neither Demorel or Badia Shire really players I want to get rid of just yet. I really don't need any more strikers. But Fabio Silva for £7 million. Transfer listed by Wolves. They don't see a future for him at the club. He spent a year on owner and elect, where actually he's done okay. Um... Hmm. Can I loan him for the year with, like, an optional future fee? Um, one issue I have actually got at the moment is we've had all these players return from loans who potentially could have been sold, who are on some fairly hefty sums of money. As a result of that, we are currently way over the wage budget. So actually, as much as I'm looking at Fabio Silva, maybe before I think about signing him, I should think about figuring out what we're going to do with our finances. Because until we start getting some interesting players... I'm going to struggle to make moves. Um, Romero is attracting interest, but no one really willing to pay close to his asking prices, which is a bit of a concern. Elsewhere, Demorel and Darun have had interest in them. I've offered them out. I'm kind of slowly lowering the asking prices, chipping away. Of course, it's still so early on in the summer that I don't want to sell them too low too soon. I'm kind of happy to offer them out and wait around. But with kind of players like Fabio Silva available for bargain prices... I don't want to miss the window of opportunity for those kind of players because I think for the money that they're asking for, we'd kind of be mad not to go for him. I mean, if we just compare Gueri and Fabio Silva, Fabio Silva is a bit kind of a of a baby Gueri. But if we could get, I don't know, 30 million for Gueri, Fabio Silva for £7 million would be some really good business that gives us wiggle room. It's kind of not necessarily a transfer that I have to make or need to make, but it would be a way to free up some funds because right now, at least the players I wanted to get rid of, I'm struggling to get rid of. And actually, if we just look at the team on the whole, um, we currently have a first team with 30 players in it. I really need to get rid of some players before I sign anyone, I feel like. I feel like this summer might just turn into a rather frustrating waiting game. Offering out players, transfer listing players, sitting around and really just hoping that eventually they attract some interest their way. Um, right now, we're on a pre-season tour in the USA. We're actually back from it in a few days' time. You can see we've got friendlies against the likes of Juve and Bilbao. But, it's a bit of a big but, the Serie A season, because of the World Cup, starts on the 24th of July. That's right, the start of the season is less than three weeks away. So, we've not got a lot of time to get any transfer business done, I really need to start seeing some interest coming in for our players sooner rather than later because this season, more than any other really, there's not a lot of time to get transfer business done. I didn't realise it was quite as soon as that. Am I going to start panicking here? Maybe. <laughs> Dortmund have come back with an offer for Badia Schille. Now, if this offer was slightly more, given the fact we've now got Romero and Demiral both at the club as things stand, maybe I'd be more open to this, but ultimately... It's a pity, pretty pitiful offer. Um, I'm going to counter-negotiate. I'm going to say 20 million. I'm kind of expecting them just to withdraw. They haven't completely withdrawn, but I feel like we're so far away in our valuations here. If we were like a Premier League club and he was on Premier League wages, they would be willing to pay the kind of amount that we're asking for. Because of our situation, because our player values are a little on the lower side, they're just going nowhere near kind of the amounts of money I really need to see for these kind of players. You know, Badia Schille was only recently signed for 7.5 million. He had an amazing year. There's no logic in selling him for just over the price we paid, given the development that he's had, given the fact he's 21. I am hoping that 
upon getting into the Champions League this year, hopefully playing regular continental football, that will raise the reputation of the club, the reputation of our players, perhaps put us in a stronger situation when it comes to selling players for what I would deem to be more reasonable sums of money. Finally, I've had an offer that I can accept. Raphael Toloi for 10.5 million. Now, the 31-year-old is fairly influential in the dressing room, but doesn't have the best leadership. I don't feel like he's a man I desperately need to keep around in order to, well, keep the players in check at the club. He's not that essential, I feel like, to the overall hierarchy. Um, last year, he only played 28 games for us. I say only, it's not a small amount of games. But given the fact we have far too many centre-backs, given the fact that at least right now we might be in a world where both Romero and Demiral are both still at the club, potentially starting to get 10.5 million for a 31-year-old who probably won't be starting for us this year. Um, it seems like a sensible bit of business. He's not on the largest wages, but from a financial point of view, I think it kind of just makes sense to wave goodbye to him. I don't want to say I'm panicking, the season starts in two weeks and I've done nothing except, well, the two bits of business you saw earlier. There's 9.5 million in the bank. There is some wage budget. If Tanoi leaves, it's maybe going to leave us with, well, around 20 million pounds to spend, which isn't an insignificant sum of money. I have kind of been looking around at what might be available, players with contracts expiring, um, also players who are transfer listed. Fabio Silva still stands out. I feel like if I was going to sign him, I'd probably need to sell one of the more kind of attacking options in our team. I mean, if we just look here at slightly older players transfer listed, there's players like Van der Beek who are maybe interesting options, but with the centre mids we've got, I'm not sure he'd be necessarily, say, an upgrade on Pessina, who I suppose in himself is almost coming in as a new signing to the club. Um yeah, we're in this weird spot where I'm kind of keeping an eye open, but because our squad is so big right now, I need to get rid of more than just Raphael Toloi. I've been looking at Soleil, offering him out a little bit because he's got some interest. You know, maybe there's a world where Romero, Demiral, and uh, I don't know, Badia Chile plays the back three, especially with, well, obviously Romero coming into the team. That is an extra top quality centre back to try and facilitate. Um, still hoping we might get some bids for players. I feel like in terms of the players we actually let go in certain areas of the pitch, the kind of centre and midfield, the centre of the defence, um, a lot of it is just going to hinge on who we actually get offers for of, uh, well, monetary sums that I think are actually worth accepting. Finally, another offer for one of our players, Pasalic, leaving potentially for 14.5 million. The catch, you might have called it here. He's, uh, he's not currently interested in a, a move to Fiorentina because apparently Monaco are interested and he'd like to play for them. Um, I'm hoping that I can maybe piss him off enough to accept that offer. You know, in horror movies where they periodically kind of come back and talk into a video camera kind of characters and they're kind of documenting, I don't know, a night somewhere or their slow descent into insanity. I feel like that's what this is for me. We're just offering out Soleil for slightly less money. There's a long list of very exciting teams interested. I don't know if it's to do with the World Cup, that no one wants to get their, their hands out their pockets and actually give us some money for our players. Um, I'm just going to continue to work away and hope eventually we get some offers. I feel like I've been saying that for the last week, that the start of the season is only 12 days away now. Maybe an option... Juve have shown some interest now in Pasalic. Now, I don't really want to sell him to a divisional rival. I almost feel like we don't have a choice. I'm going to be a bit cheeky and ask for 20 million. And worst case scenario, maybe we offer him out against them separately. Um, they've come back and actually negotiated 8 mil up front, then over three 12 months instalments. Um, they want to give, well, 11 million total actually over three instalments every 12 months. I don't really like that as a negotiated deal, but if I don't accept it, he might get unsettled. I'm going to reject it and hope that he won't turn down Fiorentina. In the meantime, I will just again offer him out for 16, or we'll go 15 and a half million. Just see if Juve make an offer in that range. And uh, they have. Happy days. So, okay, Juve and Inter showed interest. We're going to accept both of those. Elsewhere, Toloi confirmed to be going to Inter for 10.5 million. Not really loving this idea of selling a load of our players to divisional rivals. No one outside of Italy is showing an interest in our players. And ultimately, these are kind of more squad backup players. I highly doubt they're going to play super regularly in the first team in a way that makes a meaningful difference to their league campaigns against us. Dilemma time, everyone. What would you do? Let me know in the comments. Romero has had some offers for him. I offered him out for an unspecified amount. We've had offers of 22.5 million Roma and Valencia come in a little lower, but obviously all these offers way below the transfer value of 45 million. 
On the flip side, Demiral has had an offer of 17 million, which is closer to his transfer value. Additionally, Demiral is on £61,000 a week. Romero is on less than half of that. Now, let's just compare the two of them here. Now, I said earlier, if I was going to choose one or the other, I'd probably choose Demiral. But upon balance, when you consider the difference in the transfer fees, Demiral um, getting slightly less money, but also the way, way higher wages... I'm beginning to come around to the idea of keeping Romero in the team. I feel like when you look at Romero, consistent, loves important matches, he could really be the heartbeat at our defence. I feel like he and Demiral are not a million miles apart, and what he lacks in his physicals, I think, is almost more than made up for in our wider centre-backs in our system. So with that in mind, the decision I'm going to make here, I think, is going to be to sell Demiral to uh, Monaco for £17 million. It's a little less than what I'd obviously want to get for him, but fundamentally, the money on offer is good money. The wages he's on don't really justify, I feel like, what he offers to the team. Last year, he wasn't exactly a nailed-on centre-back for us. He only played 28 games. And of course, if we do see him leave the club, there's a very, very simple swap to do. It's just a case of Romero coming into the middle and... I feel like that just makes sense. So, um, in terms of transfers out, it's worth noting the Regueri's going out on loan, as is Esposito. We talked about those a little earlier. Pasalic still waiting for his potentially £15.5 million transfer deal to go through. I realise we should probably just re reject the Fiorentina deal now that's a million less. Um, so, yeah, if Demiral and Pasalic leave us, that will leave us with £32 million added on to our current transfer budget. We're going to be looking at, in the region, of £50 million transfer budget. In terms of wages, it's going to free up around about £100,000 more. Could be slightly shy of £200,000, I imagine. Uh, in terms of squad size, that is going to leave us with a squad size of 27 players, which is mm, maybe still a little bit on the larger side, but maybe you're getting towards the world where we do look to actually sign some players. What I will say with all of that is the season starts in six days i really need to make some transfers or this is gonna be the worst transfer special ever i will say at this point in the video i appreciate we've not done as much transfer business as i'd like for a transfer special but at the same time i feel like a lot of the reason you guys watch these videos is to well just get to enjoy the umming and ahhing the decision making process how we actually go about building a team i feel like it builds that excitement going into the start of the new season kind of knowing some of the critical decisions we've had to make. Of course, we just look at our team right now. Pacina and Sanchez are basically a whole new centre mid setup. Romero looking like he is going to start as the ball playing defender. I need to make a decision as to whether or not we're going to start with Marco this year. Because we have got Musso in the club who was our starting goalkeeper for the first half of the year. At 28, we could cash in on him. Elsewhere, Gallini, who was out on loan last year, only has one year left on his current deal. Maybe I should be looking to get some money for him. He's probably not quite as good as Musso when you compare him to Musso. However, when you compare him to Marco, I think it's inarguable that he is maybe a little bit better than Marco. We're in this weird spot where we've got kind of three very, very good goalkeepers. Maybe too good. Maybe I should be getting rid of one of them. From absolutely nowhere, Man City have close to match the offer that they made for Romero previously. £22.5 million for Demiral. I'm going to accept that. I don't think there's a world in which he doesn't go to Man City. Apparently, he's unhappy with how I've been treating him lately. You know what, Demiral? You're not going to have to worry about that for too much longer, my friend. You can go to Man City. Sorry, Monaco. Um, money talks. So Esposito going on loan to Oviedo. No one in Italy wanted him on loan, but I think the move to Spain could be a good one. Elsewhere, Pasalic confirmed to be going to Inter. That is £15.25 million Add it to the transfer kitty. Combine that with the Demiral money. Finally, I have some money to spend. And, uh, well, <laughs> I've got not many days to spend it before the season starts. So maybe I should be looking at players. I feel like I'm in this weird spot at the moment where I'm not entirely sure where I want to add players. We have all this money. There's more money coming into the transfer kitty. Of course, whilst the season starts in a few days' time, the beautiful thing is... We have actually got a month and a half until the transfer window closes. Like, realistically, we can use the opening kind of few games of the season through August. Uh, well, get a read on our team, maybe work out where we're lacking players. We don't necessarily have to have all our business done for the start of the season. Um, 
which is kind of the direction I'm leaning in, to be honest. I am looking at the moment, and it is going to happen potentially, to sign Fabio Silva for $8.2 million. I feel like he'd be a really, really good signing for that price. We are currently in the process of scouting him. I feel like it's just a sensible deal to do. In order to facilitate that, I am looking to move both Xerxy and Salcedo out on loan to Spal for the year. Now, I've not really talked about Spal. Um, they are an affiliate club of ours. They play down in Serie B. And to be honest, I just feel like they would be a fairly sensible team to move some of our players to. So that's kind of the direction I'm heading in, at least right now. Um, they're a team that, of course, played the league below us. And I'd like to think that both Xerxes and Salcedo are good enough to get some semi-regular first-team football with those two out the picture, that would mean that Raspadori, Guiri, Coita, Luca, and then of course the incoming Fabio Silva would be the five strikers battling out for the striker positions. In my head, that makes more sense than the current situation, at least. Okay, everything I just said, scrap that. Uh, Xerxes has decided he's too good for Spal. I'm just going to offer him out for nothing and hope someone takes him in on loan. I need him to go out and develop. I need him to get regular first team football. Good news. The team's interested. They're all in Serie C. Um, I feel like logically he's not going to accept any of these loan deals having just turned down Spal. But when has Football Manager's transfer AI ever been logical? Today's episode has just been lots of umming and ahhing and squad planning. I kind of wish I'd been able to get more done. I feel like when you look at the transfers out, Toloi, Pasalic, um, good sums of money received for them. Of course, Demoral still on his way out. The start of the season is tomorrow. In tomorrow's episode, we're going to do the two opening games. Two games I complained about, Milan and Juventus. Um, I suppose they're going to give us a chance to see where we are at. I'd be very interested to know what you would be doing in my situation. Maybe it's the sensible thing to save our money. I think when you look at this starting 11, it's a pretty solid team by all accounts. Plenty of good options on the bench as well. And uh, I feel like going into the new season, whilst it doesn't feel like we've changed things drastically... The team itself is better for the dealings that we've done. And I'm saying all of that, knowing full well, we've got £35 million still to spend. We've got, what, £150,000 in the wages. Demiral could be on his way out for £22.5 million. There could be a lot of money to spend in the month of August. Um, in some ways, next episode, or maybe even the episode after, could end up being the real transfer special. But nevertheless, I hope you've enjoyed stuff today. Salcedo's turned down Spal. Why do we have Spal as an affiliate? Spal, what is the, what is the point in you? Why, why do they exist? Okay, I've been sat down recording for the best part of two and a half hours. I feel like I've been fairly brief through preseason this time around. Of course, we've only had, well, just over a month, maybe four and a half weeks in today's episode played because of the bloody Winter World Cup. That caught me off guard. It's impacted how we've done our transfer business, but I think we're in an okay spot at the moment. The media prediction is seventh for the new season, at least at the start of things. Of course, we are in the Champions League. If we just look at the season preview to end things today, we're still in seventh. Uh, the transfer business we've done has not changed the media's mind. For those of you that feel like you've been misled by this being labelled a transfer special where no transfers happened, I've got one saving grace for you. Let's do it now. Fabio Silva, I know the loans have fallen through for the other players, but I feel like if I don't do this, can I even call it a transfer special? We are going to confirm this signing. I've bought him. I now have six or seven first team strikers. I've really not thought this through. We have seven. Um, I'm going to need to get rid of some players, aren't I, next time out? Let me know what you would do with the squad. I actually think Fabio Silva is still just a good bit of business for the price paid. 8.25 million. Considering we've spent 35 million on him, I'm going to claim it smart. You guys can let me know. Otherwise, look at the team. Drink it in. What should I be doing before August ends? Answers on a postcard. Let me know. We start the season tomorrow. And frankly... I'm an absolute mess. I am worried. I am panicking. I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> I guess I'm going to go now. I'm out.